So me, me having a dog named Sugar was not something that I did later on down the road to now match this whole protocol. Oh no, Sugar came way before the protocol, my dog. So we have been demonizing specific elements of the day and sugar, the, this white crystal that is sweet, has been one of those elements that have been demonized. Okay, so how I figure this out is because we have so many things in our food supply that convert to sugar. Not only do we have regular brown sugar, we have white sugar, we have organic sugar, we have raw sugar, we have coconut sugar, we have maple sugar, we have sugar up the yin yang, and we have carbohydrates that turn into sugar, we have certain types of grains that convert to sugar, we have certain types of um, uh, oats and other things that convert to sugar. So sugar per se is not the enemy at all whatsoever. And how I'm figuring this out is, is that this is fruit sugar, okay? And this is part of the protocol is the fruit. And then we have my juice, okay? So we have my juice, which is a salt, and then we have the fruit sugars, and then we have all the different types of sugar like honey, but honey is also antibiotic. So honey is probably the worst type of sugar you could ever give your child or you. And, you know, I looked up the sugar substitutes out there, and aspartame was invented back in 1965 as an alternative for all the food alarmists out there that don't know chemistry and science. And so all they look at is when somebody has an imbalance, like a sugar imbalance and an insulin Im imbalance, and it has to do with sugar and insulin and all that, that they then demonize the sugar. No different than when something happens and somebody is directly correlative or somewhere involved, then this person gets demonized. Okay, so the, 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 the el element sugar, and I'm gonna look up the chemical composition of sugar, okay? What is the chemical compound of sugar? And I'm sure it's going to be a compound element. Yeah, it's C12. So 12, atom, 12 atoms in a carbon, hydrogen, 22 hydrogen atoms, and then 11 oxygen atoms or something. So a sugar molecule is a generic is a generic name for sweet tasting soluble carbohydrates many of which used in food the various types of sugars are derived from different sources simple sugars are called monosaccharides and include glucose fructose and galactose table sugar or granulated sugar refers to sucrose a disaccharide saccharide of glucose and fructose in the body so your body needs sugar. It triggers ATP and all of this stuff that creates energy and all of this. But what happens is, is when you have so much sugar, okay, that's in your body, because you have to have a balance. If you have so much sugar in your body, but you're not countering the excess sugars in your body with a balancing force called salt. So you wonder why salt and sugar taste so good together, because they are made to be together, but it's called keeping a balance. And right now, we have people who are so imbalanced are going to demonize and blame one specific element. And that is what the allopathic and holistic, because in the 1980s, my parents did not like sugar. They totally were demonizing sugar. They came from biotech, okay? So they, in our household, we had sugar-free candy all over the place. And we had this thing called sorbets, S-O-R-B-E-E. -E. We got it from the Price Club back in the Bay Area where I was raised. There was other sugar-free candies. And it, was, it had actually a, um, a laxative effect. Because you ate too much of those candies, I was pooping all the time. Probably because it was so poisonous. But it's really not inherently that poisonous. It's just another chemical compound. It's another you know, compound element that everything in moderation. But... 
right now the sugar substitutes are used for people who are diabetic, who can't, who have to control their sugar. That when they eat a piece of bread, that's like a treat to them because it converts into sugar and they have so much of an ins insulin and sugar imbalance that they have to watch their sugar intake. But it's not, the reason why they're diabetic is not because of, of sugar in of itself. No, it's because they failed to understand how to balance their body and the system didn't train them to say, hey, you came in with mutations, you must fix the mutation or you're going to trigger some kind of imbalance and then your lifestyle is then going to then compound the issue. And then people start demonizing specific elements like mercury, they demonize fluoride, they demonize sugar, they demonize salt, they demonize Jillian, not that I'm a compound element, but yeah, I actually am. They demonize Hispanics, they demonize the Muslims, they demonize the Asians, the Blacks, the Jews, I mean, you name it, somebody is demonizing some element or some compound element to, element to blame for their mutation that they never fixed. So when I, when I realized that everything, even in the Ford food groups, even from, you know, the government that's trying to give you guys some kind of balance, no, they're not perfect, but they got to deal with a cross section of people who have absolutely zero idea of how things work. And so you look at the four food groups, you see like the milk, it has hormones, okay, that's, but they're trying to get people to develop and grow fast for whatever reason. So milk is one of the four food groups. What is it? The grains the, or breads, um, the fruits and the vegetables, okay? So those are the four things. And then meats, right? The proteins, the meats, the nuts. And so, and the nuts, when you cook them, they turn into sugar. I mean, even some of the, the vegetables like carrots are really full of sugar because um, I try to ferment carrots and they, they when, when yeast got into the ferments, it smelled like spoiled milk. So I knew that carrots had a lot of sugar by just how it fermented. Because when you ferment a yogurt and all that, it smells nasty, okay? Um, or ferment milk, that is. So, you know, so sugar is not the enemy. Because it's in everything, it's obviously what the body needs. But you also have to have a balance of salt. But not just salt and that's it. It's not just saying, okay, now just add salt to your diet without having it paired with the right elements. You have to pair the salt with the right nutrition. And at this point right now, it seems that even if you added salt to your vegetables, and let's say you pureed, let's say you juiced your vegetables just for kicks. You juiced your vegetables in a juicer, you added a tablespoon of salt when you drank it. Well, you really couldn't sustain that for a long time because it's just not yeah, it may energize the um, the nutrients, but it's not broken down to where you have access to the nutrition. Or else the people out there that are taking these juicing types of protocols and not doing jelly juice would be perfectly fine living to a thousand years old, but that's not happening. So obviously when it's fermented and it's broken down to a pre-digested state is where you're getting the bioavailable nutrition and you're getting the salt as the energizing force energizing it and you're getting the trace minerals from the salt, and you're getting also the nutrients, of course that's broken down, and you're getting the lactobacillus. That's the major component because you have three things that you have to keep in balance. You have to keep your candida cancer yeast balanced, you have to keep your antibodies balanced, and you have to keep your hormones well balanced. So when you are, um, taking in uh, lactobacillus, it keeps the yeast balanced so it doesn't become overabundant. So when you do take in carbs, when you do take in fruits, when you do take in anything that converts to sugar in your body, you're able to keep it at bay. You're able to keep your yeast at bay so it doesn't turn into cancer. That's what cancer is. It's yeast out of control. And the types of cancers are the different viruses that attach and then drive and program those specific cancers. That's what Candida albicans is. It's your reproductive system under attack uh, with a virus as well as the yeast out of control. And then you, as a person not understanding balance, are trying to do a Candida diet where you're eradicating all the sugar. So yeah, you're starving the fungus, but you're not fixing the mutations and you're not feeding the body because the body still needs sugar. 
It's just what it's paired with at the time of delivery when you are trying to heal your body. So right now with my recipe and with, well, with, with the protocol is you have whole fruit, but I did it this way because I can do it this way. But I really want people to be doing whole fruit, not juicing. Well, they can juice, they're not juice, but they can make, they can blend. They can take like strawberries and bananas and peaches and apricots and nothing too citrusy like like um like lemons and limes stay away from those and you put it in a blender and so you make a smoothie have it on one side of the table you do your drink right here and i didn't even strain this so you see they're solid at the bottom and i put this on the other side of the table and then i slam this first with my husband i actually mix the two and no, it didn't taste super wonderful, but it was so thick and so viscous that even though it didn't taste wonderful, the uh, the texture was something that he recognized and he could get behind, and it was palatable, even though it, it had that background taste of the J juice, which, yeah, it's but having this in the background helped it tremendously, and yes, he's getting benefits, okay? So, so this is like when you finally get to a point, okay, where, I mean, you can even still do this now, but let's say, yeah, it, down the road, when you finally get to a point where you are main, you know, on maintenance status, this is a great way to get both your vitamins and your minerals and your whatever, the good sugars or any kind of sugar, fruit sugar, natural sugar, I mean, everything is natural, but fruit sugar, and then you have your salt, your good salt, then you have your nutrients and you have your lactobacillus. So yeah, that that's pretty amazing that I just made that connection. That the lactobacillus, you know, even though we kind of innately already knew it, like I've said it before, that the lactobacillus is cancer's mortal enemy, but now I can finally like really explain why it is that this is a powerhouse drink. Because the antibodies are um they agglutinate. And so when somebody gets, I don't know, uh, like when they get a blood transfusion by mistake and they mix the A, B blood with some O negative and, and it, I guess it happens because they've used uh, salt and saline bags to then break up the white blood cells that agglutinate, that are starting to then um, thicken up the blood and shut the body down. See, when somebody does get a mistaken trans fusion, blood transfusion, they already have things available to stabilize and dilute and balance out the body's electrolytes if something like that were to ever happen. I haven't heard of anybody that I know of that did get a mistake in blood transfusion and have to go through that. But I did look it up and Google it. And yeah, the saline bags are used to break up antibodies. So when I went to the hospital a long time ago because I was alerted to sulfa, which is an antibiotic for a bladder infection, they had me on IV. And it was break because I had a high white blood cell count. I had a lot of antibodies in my body because that's because my body was going after and was creating all these antibodies against the, the sulfa. So they had me on an IV bag and it broke up the antibodies. And so there's that and then there's hormones. Now I'm trying to figure out how well I can explain how the salt and the lactobacillus and the nutrients. But then the nutrients, here you think, here's what the nutrients are. You know what nutrients are as far as A, vitamin A, B, C, D, E, and F, and G? Those are all hormones. Those are all, like when you're taking vitamins, those are poisons that, that trigger your hormones. So that's why you don't want to take vitamin A, B, C, D, E, and F. I mean, vitamin D is a hormone, okay? So vitamin A is a hormone. Vitamin B is a hormone. Vitamin C is a hormone. Vitamin D is a hormone. Vitamin F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, magnesium, all this stuff. Well, magnesium is probably a, a mineral. But all the vitamins that are being, that are so prolific in the allopathic holistic industry are all poisons to trigger your hormones. So guess what? The nutrients, so they're, so they're taking the names vitamin A, B, and C, and then they are naming those nutrients. It's not that the nutrients are vitamin A, they are actually a specific type of chemical compound element that triggers a specific hormone. So vitamin A triggers a specific hormone. And you can Google what vitamin A does. 
You can Google what vitamin C does. You can Google what vitamin D does. It's not that it, that it gives you something, it actually triggers a hormone to be developed. It is a type of chemical, name of a chemical, that triggers a specific hormone in your body. So then all of the nutrients in here keep your hormones well balanced. Oh my God, what a freaking revelation. I finally explained what, what the powerhouse of J-Juice, why it's so revolutionary. Because it takes care of the three things. Everything happens in threes, the trinity. My dog Sugar is freaking prophetic because she was right in my face. She was telling me sugar should not be demonized, <laughs> okay? You were, you were taught when you were in your teens and whatever with your family that sugar was a demon, and now I have a dog named Sugar who was the best freaking dog ever, and she's not a demon, and neither, neither is sugar in our diet. It's only demonized because we have very imbalanced people who don't know how to control their sugar intake. Oh my God. So you're seeing my brain. So all of my, you know, when you see me get triggered, you guys, when I totally just lay it into somebody because they're acting a certain way or they're a specific way that I can't deal with because they're not ready for the protocol and I see that, it jumps me to the next level of a revelation, okay? It's not even like dreams that I have to dream and be like, oh, okay, my dreams told me this. No, sometimes you have to get mad. But not mad all the time where you see the activists out there just spitting out caustic overtones every single minute of the day. No, it's like, you know, when you're in a specific homeostasis and then somebody is presented in front of you and you're going to give, like, you're going to get triggered. So now you have an upset of homeostasis. They cause you to think in a different way. They cause you to react in a different way. Now, it's up to you whether or not you can, you know, get a great return on that investment. You can waste all that energy of reacting to some troll or to something and then have it go nowhere and then you just basically wasted your energy and wasted your breath or you go and convert that. Hey, Joanna, you go and convert that into something that gives you a return on your investment. And guess what? Every single time I get triggered, I get to the next level of a thought process. And it happens every single time. Remember when I was faced with the Ohio Attorney General? when my trolls went and wrote to one of the lawyers over there and then the lawyer sent me a letter a regular mail letter and i thought it was my trolls playing tricks on me so i didn't even believe the letter i didn't even believe the letter i thought it was so i actually called up the ohio attorney general's office that was supposedly handling this wanted to speak to the attorney that was in charge and then she in fact confirmed that it was a true letter i had to substantiate I had to turn it, then it turned them in, turn them, uh, turn, give them my substantiation of all the nine questions in like a month. But I actually asked for an extra month in advance. Okay. And then that's what then prompted me to do more research. And that's when I had all the revelations that I've had. Well, all the revelations I had at the time when I was faced with the OAG is in my book. So this is what. This is what I turned into the OAG, this whole book, but it, it was in a, in a manifesto form. And it was funny how she even said the word manifesto. She's like, I don't want a manifesto. I gave her a manifesto. But it was nothing like, um, I know, Joanna, but it was nothing like, you know, the Unabomber or some crazy writing from some weird ass person. No, I basically took what was already proven in other contexts and then applied it to my context and it still made sense, okay? Because the body does what it does. What you make it mean is all the difference. Because you can have data in front of you, but then you can make up a story about it that would seem credible based upon a belief system. So if you have 20 different belief systems, you can take data and have it apply to 20 different belief systems, and they would all believe it because they would be looking for evidence based upon their belief system, and then they would be happy with the story around the data. Okay, so sugar, okay, is not bad. My drink, which houses the lactobacillus, which houses the, uh, the nutrients or the vitamins, A, B, C, D, D, F, which are basically feeding your hormones, and then um, the, uh, 
So the lactobacillus, which is cancer's mortal enemy, so we have that. And then we also have the water, the carrier for us, which our body needs. Then we have the trace minerals, which is comprising of the, which actually um, supports the elemental composition of the human body, because you need to have a certain amount of negative and positive elements, but mostly positive. But the negative elements you can't control. You can't try to chelate them out, and you can't try to put them in. You just have to feed your body this powerhouse of a drink that has everything. And then the lactobacillus, lactobacillus keeps your candida at bay. The nutrients in this drink feeds your hormones and keeps them well balanced. And then the, um, and then, yeah, and then what else? That's the lactobacillus. And yeah, and then the, um, the antibodies, the salt. The salt keeps the antibodies to where they're not agglutinating. Okay, so those are things I got to write down and remember how to say that. So that's why this is so amazing. That's why this is so revolutionary. And this is why you get rapid healing. But I wouldn't have figured this all out if I hadn't gotten triggered by everybody and their mother. If I hadn't gotten mad and cut people off and blocked people and yelled at people and went from, you know, a public group in, uh, in, on Facebook to then like an anonymous website, if I hadn't gone through all of those hardships, we wouldn't be here today with all of these revelations. Because you have to get mad for a short, a more short amount of time so that way you can break up the rut that you're in, start thinking from a different perspective, then strategize, get your arguments out, get them all out on the table, and then improve your delivery. So next time I roll this out, I'm not going to be yelling at somebody, <laughs> okay? Because I would have removed the triggers anyways. Anyone that asks me for proof more than what I have to offer, I just delete. I'm not going to give them any more of my energy. I already expended it on Jessica yesterday. And every single time I have a new type of revelation and then a troll goes and presents himself, it's then an opportunity for me to then get my argument figured out, which means that which I was asking myself, am I cannibalizing and using this person's energy to then prop up my platform? Well, potentially, yes, but then guess what? I give them my energy and then they receive it, but then they have the choice to convert it to good or convert it to bad, okay? And so that person now could make it a win-win for both of us or they can make it bad and then just leave with a bad taste in their mouth and then keep perpetuating the more negative stuff. Okay? So, you know, nobody loses whenever I have a revelation, even if I get pissed. And of course, Kathy, there's always room for learning. But is there always room for exemplifying what you learned? See, there's a difference between learning something and then actually putting that learning into action and then having a specific measurable result. So now it's more than just doing lip service. Now it's actually putting your money where your mouth is. And this is where I get, you know, where I, I kind of uh, pounded in more to people who say that they want to get benefit, but I don't see the results and they're not really talking about the results. Okay, but everybody has, right, their, their, their speed of which they want to heal. Some don't want to have rapid healing. They want to kind of play with this, which I understand that's fine. Okay, but this is more about improving your delivery process and understanding Jeju so not only you understand and do it at the level that you need to, but how you actually introduce this to your friends and family how you actually get this point across. And sometimes you need to get mad. Like Kathy, maybe you need to get mad. Maybe Joanna needs to get mad. Maybe everybody needs to get mad for a minute to then upset the homeostasis. But if you get mad and stay mad all the time, then obviously you have an imbalance. See, it's learning how to play with the elements and play with emotions to get the kind of benefit. And psychologists do it all the time with their clients. They try to upset homeostasis with their clients to get them to do an action. And with that action, it's pretty predictable. And usually if there's an action that happens, it usually lands some perpetrator in jail. And then, the, then you know, the psychotherapist or the psychologist can then work with their client without the interruption of that perpetrator. 
of some domestic violence situation. So sometimes, you know, it's good to upset homeostasis. Sometimes it's good to shake things up a bit, whether it's in your house or in your body or in your car or at work. Well, maybe it depends on if it's worth it to you, if you might get fired. But it also, yeah, I mean, you got to, you know, pick and choose your battles. And, you know, I don't let any emotion that I give off get wasted. It is always a, a place for me, like Kathy said, to learn something and then redirect it and figure out how to get the best bang for my buck on that investment. Okay? And that's, you know, so I'm learning it this way. How do I make that translate into actual financial money? Well, I'm working on that stuff. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's not always going to translate in every aspect of our lives, but if we can get our emotions and get our biochemistry well balanced, then that is going to translate into every other aspect of our life. And some things do take time. Am I 100% there? I don't think so. No. But I recognize why I have these triggers, and it's always because I'm on to the next revelation. I'm leveling up, as my trolls and that other group would say, oh, she learned a new word. She learned level up. Now, I already learned that from Kevin six or seven months ago when he said, when he was talking about leveling up in a post that he did back in the old group. You know, I learned that a long time ago. This is not something new. I just hadn't used it in a while in the context that I use it in, but it's very appropriate. Okay, so the, the three ways of which J-Juice is so revolutionary, it keeps the candida at bay, it keeps your antibodies at bay, and it keeps your hormones well balanced. Well, what is what, what components are those? Well, it's the lactobacillus keeps the candida at bay. The nutrients keeps your hormones well balanced. And then the salt keeps your antibodies well balanced as well. That is why this is so revolutionary. I'm going to write that now. Have a good day. Thanks for listening. Bye. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me drink my stuff in front of you. I'm getting so quick to get off here. <laughs> hold on, I got to blow my nose. All right, I'm going to drink this. So this can be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. No, uh, you can't die from this. This is a probiotic. It, you know what it tastes like? It tastes like pickle juice right now. This seriously tastes like pickle juice. Oh, my God. Yeah, wow. So this is going to be rather easy. So this is very savory, okay? So here we go. And, whew, and it has a fizzy type of um, feeling, like I could feel a little fizz. So it almost seems like it's carbonated. That's something very new. And this actually tastes really good. I actually like this, this batch right here. And I can feel right now my cells are just, I feel the heat from the energy. Like it's a total biohack. Do I actually need this? No, not really, but this is some sugar that, you know, that the body still needs too, okay? But I really don't want to drink this. Actually, I really want to savor and bask in the glow of this. I really don't want this. I did kind of prime myself with drinking a bit of this before drinking this, but this actually tastes good. This is freaking good. That was a good batch. That I need to do my twenty, my next twenty-four hour for our ferment with that. So, so there you go. You guys just saw a revelation today of how I can explain why this juice is so amazing. But I wouldn't have known. I wouldn't have been able to make that kind of connection if I hadn't already isolated the three things that people die from and that people will also could survive indefinitely. And it is all about balance. So what you could die from and what you could actually live indefinitely from are three things. 
that have to be well balanced. Antibodies, candida, and hormones. And then my drink that I just drank, we will will keep all of those three things. And it's like three for three. It seems that the threes is still is still very appropriate. The, the magic lucky number three, the Trinity. Okay. So you have cabbage water and salt or kale water and salt. Candida antibodies and hormones. Okay. And they all have a specific job for each of those three things, which is in my recipe. And then there's three things with the protocol. The protocol, the recipe, the healing symptoms, and the diet. Another freaking three. I didn't plan this out. It's how it rolled out. And then my dog's name is Sugar. My dog is named Sugar. Right in front of my face, letting me know that Sugar was never the enemy. See, that's, that's fucking powerful. That is powerful. That's crazy. So I think the universe told me something a long time ago when Kevin and Jason went and found my dog at the pound because they had an option of all these different dogs, but somehow Sugar was the only one that they actually gravitated to. And they knew me. They knew my lifestyle. They knew my, that I couldn't handle a big-ass pit bull. Because they were looking, they were eyeing at different pit bulls, and Sugar was the only one that they felt, you know, that they felt that I would be able to handle and that they can love as well. And so Sugar, my dog Sugar, was prophetic to let me know that she wasn't a demon and that she is needed to keep the balance of the universe. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm telling you, the universe works in mysterious ways. And then today, this revelation, I just saw Masa come on. So Masa, here's a revelation of how you can explain to Core Love and everybody in your world. The J-Juice, the three things, okay, is what gets balanced. The candida, the antibodies, and the hormones. And then the J-Juice, the lactobacillus, the probiotic, keeps the candida well-balanced at bay. The nutrients in the cabbage and kale keeps the hormones well-balanced. And then the uh, salt keeps the antibodies from agglutinating. It breaks them up. This is why this is a powerhouse. This is why they can never go back to turmeric and kombucha and honey and all of those things in the holistic allopathic world. We finally nailed why this is so amazing. But we had to figure out the three things of what c kills us and then what keeps us alive. And then the three things in this that manages all those three things. And then I we realize that sugar is not the enemy. Okay? But yeah, don't feed your kids honey because that's a sugar with an antibiotic in it. It won't do shit for you. Okay. So Masa, can you say that one more time? <laughs> okay. So the three things that will kill us or keep us alive, candida, antibodies, and then the hormones. The three things in my recipe is the probiotic, the lactobacillus, is candida's mortal enemy. So it'll keep the candida at bay. The nutrients in your cabbage and kale, which are vitamin A, B, C, D, E, and F, and G, those will keep your hormones well balanced. And then the salt will keep the antibodies from agglutinating. This is why this is a powerhouse. It keeps all the things that would kill you well balanced. The lactobacillus keeps the candida at bay. It controls it. The antibodies are controlled by the salt. The salt stops it from agglutinating. Because when somebody gets a bad transfusion, what do they do? Or when they get too many antibodies, like when I had too many white blood cells, they put me on IV to stabilize, to give me electrolytes. Okay? And then when you have a hormonal imbalance, you need nutrients. Those nutrients then feed and keep your hormones well balanced. That's what vitamin A, B, C, D, E, and F, G, those are all, I mean, when you, when you buy them in the store, they're all poisons. Yeah, they're all poisons that induce hormones. The trinity of life or the trinity of death. Yes. Yes, 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 Masa. The trinity of life or the trinity of death. 
And every single time I get mad, like when I got annoyed at you yesterday, but you know I love you. But when I got annoyed at you, I got annoyed at somebody else, it jumped me to the next level. But yet you're different than the other person I got annoyed at. That Jessica wouldn't know how to convert what I gave her into something good. But Maso, when I got annoyed at you, you converted that to something amazing. And this is why you're going to do so well on this protocol because you turned my energy, whatever it was, because in a way I kind of cannibalized you in a minute for a minute because I, did, I really needed to explain why it is I needed to use these certain words. And, and you, know, you needed to know why too because you didn't know and you're reacting. And so, but you turned the energy that I threw at you and you made it amazing. And you still are keeping on with this. You haven't rejected me even though I get all like whatever. Kevin's the same way. I'll get annoyed at Kevin. Not anymore, hardly, because we figured out our boundaries. <laughs> but, you know, but he, whenever he annoys me or whatever, it jumps me to the next level. So you guys that kind of like poke and prod at me in the right direction, you guys, you know, jump me to the next level. But I don't want to always get mad at you because you're not always going to try to trigger me. But sometimes, you know, when we really legitimately have an issue with something and we need to get it out and we feel we have the space to do that and you're not afraid to say it, even though I may get mad, you know, just because that's the way I am, ultimately I will look and see what your points are and then I will consider it and then it actually helps me um, articulate why it is I do the way things that I do. And if it's worth it for me to change. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It just depends. I have to look at it. You make me examine my whole arguments closer when you question them. So, you know, th that's why I, you know, respect you, the people that, you know, that do give me constructive criticism, but that know who I am, not just some person out there that, but, I, you know, I, I, I do react and I get kind of weird sometimes. But I recognize it. And then we move on. So, yeah, so... That is something I need to write. Why this juice is so powerful. And then I got to go find the evidence on PubMed, put it in my bibliography and have it, you know, in the key in the book while well, it's going to have little numbers and brackets next to it. And there you go. So there we go. We are now vindicated. We can explain why this juice is so revolutionary without going into such crazy ass detail, which will lose the person. Yeah. Oh, we do get this. We got this. And it's been a freaking journey. I'll tell you what, <sighs> believe me, there was no way. Thanks, Joanna. There was no way I could have predicted any of this. There is no way this juice will bring out things you wouldn't even dream of. You couldn't even dream of. That's why you got to be able to deal with the, the, the first initial hurdle, if you can get through the first, you know, the first trimester of this protocol, you guys got this. If you quit in the first trimester of this protocol, you'll never be able to get back on it again unless you are, your back's against the wall. Okay, so get through the first trimester. Okay, and then... <laughs> Masa says, I have to write my testimony on my latest cold. It's like I got all this slime out of me. Oh, I believe it. Oh, I believe it. I remember seeing all the orange stuff come out of me and stuff. I mean, it was like all that spongy candida stuff because that's what we were looking at in the group when people were like putting all the different weird things in like in glasses and water. And it looked like some kind of weird object down at the bottom of the ocean some spongy object. It was a trip. And then I saw that same orange spongy stuff in the bottom of my toilet after a few waterfalls, but I haven't seen them since. I've done waterfalls and all I see now is just brown and that's it. I don't see anything weird or anything colorful. I don't see any, um, any like pods or those like piece that looks like, you know, corn nuts, like yellow pod corn nut looking stuff. I don't see that anymore. So it's, it's, I got rid of a lot of stuff when I did, when I was doing this protocol, when I did the first waterfalls and a lot of like slimy stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, I think that's called like mucus placoid that gets built up in your body. 
um, the congestion is not the type that keeps me from breathing, you know, it's completely coming out and I have energy behind my cold. I believe it. Oh yeah, it's, it's um, like the mucus placoid that comes out of your ass. And so, yeah, when you release your lymph nodes through this protocol, all the stuff that gets stuck in your lymph nodes and it gets stuck in different parts of your body, it's finally able to be released. And then you start feeling and seeing things so much differently and so much clearer. Oh, it's, it's, I tell you, it's, it's like magic. And, uh, and it's not alchemy. So those that want to mistake my drink for alchemy, it's not alchemy. We're not raising the dead and we're not trying to kill anybody. What alchemy is, is you find that in the holistic allopathic world because they're taking poisons and then manipulating specific hormones to get a specific um, outcome. And then Moss says, it actually feels like it's coming out of my brain. I believe it. I, be I've had, I remember having feeling weird movements, like almost like light fluttery movements or quick ones. In the beginning, you know, I'm just like, oh, my God, was that a parasite in my brain that I just removed, that my body just removed, <laughs> you know? But who knows what it is. We can create a story around it. But, yeah, it could be a mucus placoid. It could be the candida coming out of your brain. It could be a parasite being dislodged from your brain. It's so hard to say and really doesn't even matter. But, you know, we know we have parasites in our body and they get everywhere. We know we have candida fungus everywhere. And we know we have... Um, Parasites, candida fungus. Man, yeah. And we know we have all of that stuff everywhere. Okay. I think I blew out of my nose a pair. <laughs> I'm almost afraid. I don't even want. Believe me, I'm so glad the days are done where people are sending me pictures of their parasites, pictures of their poop. I'm so glad those days are done. I'm so glad I stopped everyone from private messaging me because I'll tell you what, I'll be eating my dinner and then someone's like, hey, look at this. What do you think this is? I'm like, oh, I could have really done without this. I could have gone all day without seeing your poop, <laughs> okay? But that's what happened in the beginning when we had that group is that people were showing pictures of what was coming out of their body on the J-Juice. And it was necessary. It really was. And then, you know, that was what was first initially in my book. And then I took away those pictures, you know, and, and it didn't want to gross you guys out because you can Google all of the different human parasites that are out there. Not that, believe me, I don't because I don't need to see that. But, um, but I'm just really, really, really happy that those days are over. That was a two year ago type of thing. Now y'all can go Google all of your parasites and try to try to describe them in words and then go and Google them and see if some picture comes up that's somewhere similar to what your words say. And then you can be like, okay, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a liver fluke or it's this or it's that. So yeah, so that's, you guys just seen a revelation today. You guys just seen a revelation. This is, this is huge. This is the possibility of J-Juice to where you actually can get your thoughts out, okay? And you can really um, articulate and express what you truly want to say without being tongue-tied, without fumbling over your words, without being so circuitous. And sometimes I find myself rambling before I get to the point. Because it's like I haven't really fully developed the thought process. So when you see me ramble or see me struggle with reaching for words or reaching for a way to articulate, it's because it's a thought process that's not very well gleaned out. But then, you know, that is when you actually pull out the argument is when you struggle through it. And some of you haven't figured out how to struggle in public and maybe don't want to. And I don't blame you because when you put yourself out there, you're right there, right for the taking for everybody to go and consume the shit out of you. <laughs> okay. And not all of you are prepared to do that. So, you know, if you really, truly, you know, want to get to the next level, just do your own, you know, YouTube lives to where it's not um, being put out there. It's private only. <clears throat> and you can do a private only Facebook live to practice where you can have it only be where you see it only and nobody else. And then you can watch yourself and improve your arguments. What creates all the candida in all the body though? 
Donna Lee. Oh, it's yeast. Yeast, you have yeast. Yeast is part of your body, Donna Lee. Yeast is part of your body. Yeast is an organism that is found in all biodiversity. Plants have yeast, animals have yeast, and humans have yeast. But when you overfeed the yeast and you don't keep it at bay, it becomes a gremlin. Okay? So, you know, you're supposed to have yeast because it cleans up all the sugars, excess sugars, and the sugar substitutes or the heavy metals. So you have all different components of your body have a specific purpose to keep the balance because you are in an environment that has a lot of different elements. These are the periodic tables. These are the heavy metals and all the different compound elements. You have 180 elements. I'm sorry, 120 elements. 118, 120 elements. You have over 9 million compound elements. And so you have to have an intelligence to your body to be able to, to, uh, to release any excess heavy metals, excess heavy metals, and then absorb what your body needs. And the elemental composition tells you that you have to have a certain amount of trace minerals. Those are heavy metals. Those are negative elements, but they're heavy metals, but they're trace minerals. Okay? So, um, so yeast keeps those excess heavy metals at bay but if you take on too many heavy metals and then you you you've constipated your digestive system where you're not releasing them then you have an overabundance of it and then the yeast then feeds upon the overabundance and then it becomes a gremlin it becomes like buddha well not buddha i'm saying job of the hut and then it turns into something horrible This stuff destroyed my husband's heavy metal issues. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. The um the J juice broke up her husband's heavy metal issues. And then Kathy Showman Rotan said the for, for the first time in eating fermented cabbage leaves is good. Color me surprised. <laughs> what kind of color is that? <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> so yeah, so hopefully Donna Lee that that um, answered your question okay so so yeah yeast when it when it when it when it um, becomes overabundant turns into candida and then when it becomes way out of control it turns into cancer and that's a sign of an imbalance so there are three things that could kill you but also keeps you alive indefinitely the trinity of life and the trinity of death that's the perfect way to say it, Masa. I love that. That's perfect. Oh, my God, you are a genius, my dear. Is the three things, candida, antibodies, and hormones. Okay? And this is why the drink is so revolutionary, because it supports and keeps all those three, th three things well balanced. And that way you're able to eat whatever you want, breathe whatever you want without going overboard. You're not going to walk into a garage with all the windows closed and turn your, your car on, okay? You're not going to tempt fate and say, okay, I'm so well balanced. I'm going to go walk into a gas chamber or I'm going to go hang out in Chernobyl and play naked running in the woods, okay? <laughs> Thanks, Masa. Um, you know, you're not going to tempt fate. You're going to have common sense that you know you have a working immune system, but you know it's all about balance. And so when you are exposed to too many poisons, guess what? Your antibodies build up. And when you have too many antibodies build up, those natural killer cells, they then agglutinate and then they destroy you. That's what people die from when they get overwhelmed by a specific element. When you get too much sun, that, that creates more hormonal imbalances and antibodies. So that's called sun poisoning. Whenever you take in like uh, any type of, let's say, rat poison, that creates natural killer cells. And those natural killer cells will then attack the pathogens but also attack the body. That causes an imbalance. That's why people die from poisons. I'm sat watching you with my grandson. Hi. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, hope you're not sad. I'm sat. I'm not sure what sat is, but I'm assuming it's something good. And I'll keep things clean for your grandson, okay, Jane? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so yeah, so the J juice keeps the, the trinity of life well balanced, but also could be the trinity of death if you don't understand. 
Okay, so sugar. <laughs> oh, Masa, the sugar is not the enemy. And my dog was right in front of me telling me, I'm not the enemy, I'm not the enemy. And I'm like, okay, I already kind of know that, but I never really, never really, really focused on it and explained it. So I'm going to have to write a chapter that sugar is not the enemy. And this is, this. I'll have to name the chapter, this is why the Jilly Juice is so revolutionary. The three things, the trinity of life and the trinity of death. <sighs> okay, I gotta write some more. I can do it. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for giving me your energy and your hormones. Masa, Jane, all of you, Kathy, Joanna, Karen, Zoe, all of you guys. I haven't seen all the people, you know, with their emojis. But you guys are revolutionary. You guys understand this. I am not alone in this. Okay. I have people who are just like me out there. It took a while to find y'all, but I have people that are just like me out there. And that is so comforting. Even though my immediate world, there's not a lot of people that are like me that understands me, but that's okay. Maybe they will, maybe they won't, but I'm not, you know, my heart isn't set on them understanding. But the fact that you guys understand this, it it comforts me to know that humanity does have hope, like real hope. He called Charlie Brown. We sat on the doorstep watching the live feed. Oh, he called Charlie Brown. Okay. Okay, Jay. <laughs> so, yeah. So you guys, you know, do, do the Jay juice. Understand the Jay juice will keep you alive and it will never cause your death. Humans who don't know J-Juice will cause the death. They will cause the imbalances in their system. Okay? All right. So you guys just, you guys just keep, keep on keeping on. I adore the crap out of y'all. I really do. Donna Lee, sugar is not the enemy. Candida hormones and boys are. They're not the enemy. It's keeping the balance, honey. They can be the enemy if you're imbalanced. That's why you got to do J-Juice. The trinity of life and the trinity of death is candida hormones and antibodies. So as long as you keep those three things well balanced with my juice, they won't be the enemy. Okay? You're, you're okay, Donna. You're understanding this, but remember, it's about balance. Too much candida, cancer. Too many hormones, hormone imbalance, death. Too many antibodies, death but you keep your candida at bay, you keep your hormones at bay, and you keep your antibodies at bay, but you still need them. You can't eradicate them, okay, Donnelly? You cannot eradicate them, but you can keep them well balanced so they don't become too much of a problem, okay? Yes, I'm excited too with this new language. <sighs> okay, so do the J-Juice. Now there should be no reason why that you don't do the J-Juice. Keep doing it because now you know what it's actually doing. And then you can actually accurately explain to your people that the salt um, breaks up the agglutination of your antibodies. When you have too many antibodies, it's no different than taking on an AB blood type, an incompatible blood type, and then all that antigen turns into antibodies and then thickens the blood and shuts the body down. So what does the salt do? The salt breaks up the antibodies. The lactobacillus breaks up the candida. The nutrients feed your hormones, but it keeps them well balanced. There's no hormonal imbalance. And the salt also is an energizing force. So not only it breaks up the agglutination of your antibodies, but it also energizes everything. Oh, thanks, Pamela Ferris. Thank you. The good salt energizes all of your 11 different systems to work the way they're supposed to. That's huge. That is huge. All right. J-I-L-L-Y-J-U-I-C-E dot com. Just get the book. Those, that revelation, write those revelations in the book so you remember. Okay? And this will be the easy way to talk to your friends and family. And I'm going to write something... I'm going to write a paragraph on this or, a, or 
chapter, short chapter, and I'll cite my sources. So that way you'll have it forever in our next book. And I'll probably put it on the Facebook too, just so you, you have that excerpt out there, okay? So yeah, Christy, Crushank, Timbrook, you kind of came in late, but replay this. Major revelations, I'm gonna put on here, major revelation, revolutionary revelation. So that way this is going to alert people, they need to actually watch this. You guys have an amazing day, thank you. All right, bye.